Welcome to The Bright Side of Longevity. Join Dr. Roger Landry and guests as they discuss the bright side of getting older through healthy longevity. Guided by research, this lighthearted and educational discussion will leave you with practical tips and ways to impact your lifestyle to brighten life's journey. Welcome, everybody. Right side of longevity. I'm with Danielle, my colleague and esteemed teacher for me and everybody. Uh, welcome. Thank you for that intro, Dr. Roger. I feel the same about you. Wow, that's kind. That's why this is so much fun, isn't it? So this is part two of a series, and this is entitled, drumroll again. Love, it's not at all what you think it is. That's intriguing. Uh, We find this very intriguing. For those of you who did uh, hear part one, or uh, we're just going to review. And for those who didn't, we recommend that you go back to it or just listen to a summary. What we talked about in in the last podcast that we had was the relationship between fear, love, and connection. Uh, as a species, and especially today, fear is something that is generated by the thought of isolation and abandonment, because we are social creatures. Our ancestors did it. It really was about survival. And it's still in us today as something that is that is at our very core, uh, the, probably the, one of the worst things that could happen to us. Some say even worse than death. And many times it leads to death. Uh, And that is being abandoned. And fear comes from anything that that, uh, generates the feeling that what is happening is going to leave me alone. Whether it's that you failed at something, whether someone uh, ostracized you, someone criticized you, whatever. And you're feeling that you're alone. And, And that feeling of fear is a barrier to love. Because love really when we come down to it is about connection it is about a and we're going to explore that further today in uh relative to very specifically to or at least drilling up a little bit i guess where we were drilling down before about relationships in general but in particular love as we talk about it today in the society so there we are that's what we're doing and there's a bunch of studies on this aren't there danielle Yes, I'm I'm happy to to hear there is a new study on happiness and you're going to tell us about Robert Waldinger's newest Yes. Research. You know, there aren't too many studies that have been going on for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years and uh, Robert Waldinger has been involved in what makes people happy. There's been a lot of talk about happiness lately because I think there's so much unhappiness in our society. And uh, and there's a lot, as you can imagine, over that time, they followed people over their entire lives and and really drilled down as to what led to happiness and health. And in a word, relationships, any kind of relationship. Uh, this is February. And so therefore, we we tend to think about romantic relationships, which are very important to us It's very important to the continuation of the race, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, uh, and our species, but very important to us as individuals. But they can be rocky. And we want to talk about that. But, but as we talk about romantic relationships, it's inevitable that we're going to be talking about relationships in general, which happened to Dr. Waldinger's study. One of the things I loved about that study, I happened to watch an interview he just gave, and he had mentioned that we need to re- to nurture those relationships, but they don't have to be romantic or friendships. You can have those kind of relationships with strangers. And the big thing was having a go-to person when we need to, when we need to talk to somebody. And so he gave some tools for strengthening them such as taking the initiative and he challenged people on the call 
go ahead and text somebody you haven't talked to in a long time and just say, hey, I was just thinking about you. And he says, if they text back while we're here, let me know. <laughs> because, and he, he talked about establishing routines with people. Maybe there's somebody you meet regularly for coffee. And if you're in a long term relationship, try something new, try a new restaurant, go to a park you've never been to, doing something to to keep it um, interesting, and then to connect around shared interests. And the hardest one, at least for me, and for a lot of people is getting comfortable striking up conversations with total strangers. And he, he gave some really good takeaways. And it was all as you said, Dr. Roger, just establishing and maintaining relationships. As we said in the first part, uh, love uh, and and love broadly defined and specifically defined is really always about connection with others. And, uh, and you know, romantic love, I don't want to sound like a, a screw. I've been married for 52 years <laughs> and uh, we met very so at a very young age, and we've been through all stages. So it's, it's a lot of my research, but it's also a lot of my personal experience. Romantic love is fabulous. It's something we should all uh, hopefully find at some point and enjoy. And because it is cloud nine specifically, but we have to realize, and this is not negative. This is reality that we, it's like, um, uh, uh, enjoying a roller coaster ride. It's going to end at some time. It's going to change is what I want to say, not end. It's going to evolve and it's going to evolve into something that is much more durable uh, because a romantic love in that first part is like a high that uh, like any high you, you just cannot sustain. But that doesn't mean that that's the end of love. That means that romantic love can now evolve into something that is much more durable, that is much more meaningful in your life, that is lifelong, and that is that is uh, uh, has the capability of eliminating fear, like we talked about in the beginning time, and being very uh, content and uh, and fulfilled in life. It's um, romantic love is the first step. It's one I hope we all get to experience and it it can last how long? It's, it's different for different people, but uh, it's the evolution into having, as you said, a go-to person and someone who is going to be there. Sue Johnson talks about this, didn't she, in her study? She, she, uh, she is a, um, a psychologist and a, and a consultant. And she talks about love, romantic love, and any love as uh, as uh, having someone who will have your back yeah. no matter what you'll fight you'll be at odds you won't talk to each other you'll throw food at each other maybe however you you act out like that but you're there for each other you understand that no one's going to be left no one's going to be abandoned which generates fear which is the opposite of of love love is connection there's a study she talks about, right? Yeah. She talked about a shock study of 2006 where women were volunteering to have their foot shocked. Those who were alone and experiencing the shock registered pain. However, those who were holding hands of their romantic partner, those who were happily married, did not set off a pain response. They didn't even know they got shocked. Conversely, if somebody were, was in an unhappy marriage, they felt the same pain as the person who was alone. And to me, that's a pretty powerful illustration of the power of being connected. Absolutely. You know, and there was another part of the, the story, which I, uh, of the experiment, which, which I can relate with a personal story. Um, I was having a tooth pulled several years ago, and it was a mess. It was really difficult. And, you know, the pliers and drilling and despite all the pain medicine, it was pretty painful. And one of the technicians put her hand on my shoulder. I didn't know her, uh, but she put her hand on my shoulder. And uh, I was, I felt, I believe I felt significantly less pain. I was very much comforted by that. And that was all, no words, just the hand on my shoulder. And that was part of this study, wasn't it? That one of them, you held hands with someone, a stranger, yes. which had an effect. Yes. In fact, even holding hands with a stranger 
was better <laughs> than holding the hands of a partner if you're in an unhappy marriage. Yeah, wow. See, wow. It's powerful stuff. Uh, we've t- said it before. We're, we're social creatures and we're better together. And and together, it can be difficult. Relationships can be very tough, romantic or otherwise. But as we said in the first part, uh, it's a, it's about connection. And as Sue Johnson says, a connection that you know, no matter what happens, no matter what, you know, how you may hurt someone inadvertently or, or anything that happens, you know that they're there. You will not be abandoned. You will not have that fear, which comes basically fear is about abandonment and being alone. I think, uh, uh, Oh, someone once told me that uh, uh, when I was in clinical medicine, that their greatest fear was dying alone. Wow. And it wasn't about the dying part, it was about the alone part. Sue Johnson had more to say in this uh, this excellent video with an acronym of, of R. You know what those stand for, the A-R-E? Yes. Accessible. Are you accessible to me? Will you be there when I need you? Are you responsive? Will you respond to me when I need you? And are you emotionally engaged? So to remember that basically, as you said, Roger, knowing that that person unequivocally has got their back, they're accessible, they're responsible, and they're emotionally engaged. You know, it's too bad that, uh, I don't know, maybe it's Hollywood, maybe it's uh, movies, whatever it is, but our notion of romantic love, and that's the way it has to be, or else there's no love there. That is so wrong. Uh, I mean, we have many love relationships in our life that don't start romantically, and and persevere and uh we we are rewarded by that but romantic love is another one it just happens to be singularly uh exciting singularly powerful with a spike if you were tracking it but when that spike comes down that doesn't mean it's ended it means it's evolving now into something that is that is uh that is going to be uh, that is going to guide your life and support your life and sustain your life and give you contentment and fulfillment, something that, uh, you know, is priceless. That kind of relationship can be with a with, a, with one partner as, as an evolution of a romantic uh, uh, relationship, but it can come in so many other ways, can it, Danielle? Yeah. So I'm thinking about the people who are single and listening to this saying "Eh, on Valentine's Day, you're talking about all this love. Having been single for a long time (laughs) and I got married later in life, you can be a love ally for a person who might be single and is looking for connection. It doesn't mean that if you don't have a romantic connection, you're doomed to be unhealthy and unhappy. So for the person who's single, seeking out connection with friends and the and their tribe. For the person who, if you have a friend, so if I know friends are single and I know Valentine's Day is going to be a tough day for them, I can be there for them, not just on Valentine's Day, but I could be one of their allies that if at two o'clock in the morning something bad happens, are I am there for them, I'll respond and I'll be engaged. I may be a little drowsy at 2 a.m., but I will be there for them. And that's what everybody needs. At, at least two or three people that you know they've got your back. You know, let's go, you know, once again, very quickly, going back to how we live for most of the time on Earth as tribes. Uh, that basically was the story. I mean, no one was ever really on. In fact, I've said sometimes that I, I bet they didn't have the experience of their personal identity like we have today. We feel alone in the world many times. They always felt part of a group. And with, with a common purpose, which is so powerful. You know, last time we talked about oxytocin, you know, you know, <laughs> talk about a magic, uh, mag- I won't call it a drug, I'll call it a hormone. And, uh, and, and I think we've all felt this uh, at one time or another, there's, you know, there's many things that give oxytocin, but the feeling that you get from that, I think is what most of us uh, 
call love in many ways. So what are the things you, you know, a big long list of those things that, that, uh, that uh, cause oxytocin to be. Even among friends, physical contact, sure. you know, being, uh, I have a friend of mine who's an avid hugger. She goes out regularly and gives free hugs uh, to, to total strangers, just making their day better. Spending time seeing a scary movie where, oh, you grab the other person's hand because something scary is going to happen or singing, dancing, exercising, going and and doing some kind of activity together that you both enjoy. Dancing generates fear in me, Danielle. (laughs) (laughs) Well, just hold just hold Paula's hand. (laughs) <laughs> and All it'll right. be okay. All right. <laughs> no, or or do what I do. I dance with uh, Simone, our dog. I hold her paws when we dance together. Get a get a pet. Um, and then, of course, in romantic partnerships is is intimacy. But the point is, you can experience that oxytocin rush and that love hormone by being among friends and and just being present for each other. It's interesting you mentioned Simone because. You know, what is with this absolutely powerful love relationship we have with our dogs, say? I'll I'll say dogs because they tend to be more responsive. So what is that about? I think it goes directly to what we were saying in the last uh, podcast uh, about our ancestors, but all in connection, but about this. Here is someone, a dog that we know will always be there for us, you know, maybe not verbally or I mean, sometimes, verbally, but, but they know that they're, they're there for us, no matter what happens, no matter uh, even if we neglect them a little bit, uh, you know, and uh, they'll always be there for us. And that generates such a connection and such love. I think that that's a good example that can be so much more with a human, but also so much less because we're complex species <laughs> that unconditional support you know and our cats are like that too yeah and we have three cats that we if we both sit on the couch by the end of the day three cats and a dog are all going to be on the couch with us when we've got the whole rest of the house uh <laughs> so there, there's a t- tremendous uh connection that you can have even just having a pet and i think i think it's representative of of how our ancestors live in it. So it, we have a, a, a basic human memory of, of, a, of that uh, absolute always there for you and uh, always there to comfort and sometimes protect. I've got a story I think that exemplifies this uh, this having your back and relation deep relationships uh, with not only humans but other creatures. So and the fact that our relationship with with dogs are is so powerful. This, this story is about someone in the uh, the West not so long ago, where a bear, large brown bear I believe, crawled up onto the porch, and uh, it was a little dog, not a great big dog or anything but the dog was was out there and began to bark and nip at the, the feet of the bear and in order to protect you know the person inside person inside however sees it as a threat to the dog <laughs> so <laughs> was out there with a broom and the lady's hitting this bear and finally they take together they chase it away uh can you imagine though i mean it, you know that is a relationship that is so powerful and uh, it happens with humans, but can happen with others too. Having someone's back. I love that. It reminded me of a story recently where uh, a gator went after a dog and the man ran into the water and like pried the gator's mouth open so the dog wow. could get free. And wow. in all cases, alligator, dog and human, bear, dog and human, everybody was fine. Nobody died. But uh, just as you mentioned, just the powerful connection. Yes. Yes. And uh, it. Again, it's it's possible with so many things, and even if even if it's what we wouldn't consider like mammals and dogs and things, it it can be with the earth. It can be with flowers and forests and trees and the world in general. It uh, connection is the key. So, I think you know I think that this is really about 
can be about relationships in general. This is about romantic relationships. Of course, it was generated by the February and Valentine's Day. But I, I hope that we've been able to communicate that this is more broadly about any relationships and how badly we need them in order to to be truly human and to live a life uh, that has no fear or minimizes fear, which uh, unfortunately today is so rampant in our societies. Maybe we should talk more about this and, and, and how do we build build a relationship or make for a better relationship? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, you're talking about building interpersonal skills. Yes, and- really. Yeah. So I think this has been a great discussion about, you know, our, you know what the relationship of fear, connection and love and the rom- romantic love and all kinds. But but really uh, what we're talking about is even broader, right, about relationships. So I really think that um, in this age of technology, uh, we don't talk about it enough. And I, how about we do a podcast next time on the the social skills, interpersonal skills, and and the things that get in the way. What do you think for next time? Let's do it. So we can talk about building how to build interpersonal skills for all you hermits out there. We can talk about the need for empathy and how it's different from sympathy. How social responsibility and giving back can key up our happiness and our connection. And we're also going to cover some of Dr. John Gottman's work on the four horsemen. These are the relationship killers. So if you need to, if you want to establish and maintain better relationships, be sure to tune in for the next episode. So let's do that next time, Danielle. And uh, thank you for this coming through this uh, journey with us about relationships and uh, fear and love and connection. And I hope that uh, it helps. And I hope that uh, you've had or will have or are have a romantic relationship, but even more importantly, that you have a relationship that's durable for a lifetime. See you next time. Bye. Happy Valentine's Day, Dr. Roger. Thank you. And you say you and John. You've been listening to Dr. Roger and Friends, The Bright Side of Longevity. If you like the show, please rate and review, and be sure to click to follow.